Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing Ride 4 and we're going to be using the Tamarini Massimo T12 right here in a very sodden Imola and let me tell you this one is going to be a bumpy one the track of Imola for some reason is extremely bumpy in Ride 4 I'm not sure if it's actually like this in real life but in the game it is extremely slippy and extremely bumpy. Is this carnage already from the left-hand side? Jesus, two or three riders down and more riders down as Alessandro Pavon got absolutely knocked into oblivion there going onto the grass and entering the race with high hopes and exiting with absolutely zero. So now onto the right-hand side. It is really, really slippy, the circuit right now. We've got the rain tyres on and board the T12 and it's all oh, there's more carnage. There's more riders down here in uh, the very difficult circuit of Imola. Now I will mention I haven't got any electronics turned on, just engine braking on two, and I'm really, really feeling the difficulty of trying to stay on board this motorcycle as another rider goes down. We are down to just four riders in this battle for the top position. This is getting rather silly as we try and go around the outside of Lino Pozzetto, not quite there just yet. You never know when the move is going to come in a dot race video. I try and not choreograph it, but sometimes it does come across that way as we get a little bit out of shape on the brakes. Oh, going around the outside. That's a bold and brave manoeuvre if we ever did see one. But cutting the corner there gives us three tenths of a second of penalty. I guess that was a little bit audacious, a little bit more ambitious than I would have wanted to. But I, I still feel very, very loose on board this motorcycle. And of course, seeing so many crashes... It's no wonder why I'm beginning to worry a little bit about my own performance here in this one because the conditions are treacherous and I don't know whether you can see it or not but the bike is literally bouncing across this track all the way through. It's it's kind of jarring. It, it almost feels like it's a juddering or frame dropping. It's just because the bike... Oh my goodness! Lino Pozzetto makes a mistake there as well. Bloody hell! thought he was going to go down if that's a male uh, Lino. I think I do believe it is. But anyway, back to the action unfolding right now as we start... The second lap breaking extremely firm for the left hander. Ran it a little bit deeper and getting caught on the rumble strip, and we found ourselves getting to the gravel. More riders crashing. Oh my god. Oh, more riders crashing. This is absolute carnage here in Imola. But we now have Jade Wright, who has a seven second lead ahead of the pack because literally everyone has crashed. The only person right now who is yet to crash is Jade Wright, the American who is leading this Grand Prix, seems to have just been able to avoid any mishaps when compared to the rest of us because this is a treacherous circuit really really treacherous added the difficulty with the bike with no electronics the difficulty of the circuit with a lot of bumps and rainy weather or at least a very damp track I guess is certainly recipe for disaster here today but onto the left hand side we will go I do feel rather strong going into this particular section here so we now go enter the right hand side and I still can't pronounce the name of that corner I think it's Aqua something, <laughs> Aqua Minerale or something like that, or Mineral, I, I really don't remember, I've pronounced it so many times I've been corrected so many times but I'm yet to remember how to say it correctly but now into the very anti altar, we are right onto the rear of Frank Jordan ahead of us, so another American ahead of us on this circuit, unlike the first person who Jay Wright is, we get past him on this super amount of speed and aggression as we go underneath the bridge and then to the left hand side for Rivazza. Two seconds clear from Frank Jordan, or at least two seconds clear from our previous lap time. But we did, of course, have the standing start in this one and we did crash on this particular lap. But a quick update for you Jade Wright is about five seconds clear from us right now as Sarah Morrow goes in rather gingerly into the right hand of Varianti Bassa. But we now have an opportunity to pick up the power and hopefully chase down Miss Wright, who is leading this Grand Prix right now. So the start of the third lap we did get three seconds quicker than the previous lap even though we did crash, bear that in mind. But now, that is it. Oh my goodness, Jay Wright has crashed and that completely caught me off guard. Jay Wright has crashed, so Jay Wright's lead has evaporated quicker than this track is drying and now Sarah Morrow is in the lead, gifted the Grand Prix lead but not the victory because this Grand Prix is yet to be over. There's still quite a few laps in this one ladies and gentlemen so we do have a great opportunity for taking the victory here in Imola in this very, very treacherous conditions. So lap three out of five, Sarah Morrow in the lead, three seconds, excuse me, three tenths of a second just further up the road as we now go into this very difficult section for Piratella. It's nice to keep it in nice and tight here and then slowly bring on the acceleration to bring on the drive. And I tell you what, a fancy move here going into the right-hander. The AI does seem to be slow coming around the outside, wearing very similar leathers to me right now. 
kind of looks like a teammate of mine, but it isn't, as we now pass going into turn 10. Beautifully done. This track is beginning to dry. The bike is beginning to feel a little bit better. I'm feeling rather confident now, ladies and gentlemen. I would say, wait and prepare for some very fast laps. It, it is coming. It's just a matter of time. So now onto the left-hand side, probably to one of my favourite parts here. It's one of those parts of the track you can win and lose races going under the bridge here and then breaking very firm, entering into Rivarts. I do like this difficult section because it does feel like you can really launch the bike in there, but if you make it just a little bit too late, you're going straight into the kitty litter and never to be seen again. So now onto the right-hand side, we've got this very difficult, difficult part here. A very difficult left hander, so difficult uh, three times in a row there almost as we go into the very anti Barca, but beautifully executed. This is what I'm feeling now. I'm feeling much better now, more confident. The start of this Grand Prix was just terrible. It, the bike felt awful. I was generally really going to struggle if the bike was going to stay like that. It felt like it was going to slip in every other corner. And as you can see, the bike's still bobbling and bouncing on the circuit, which is really odd to me. Whenever I play Imola, it's always like this, and if anyone's got any sort of real life experience about doing a track day right here in this fantastic circuit, does it feel like that? Is it really that bumpy? I just assumed it was a, maybe a minor glitch because it doesn't happen with every bike. Now I guess you can tell me the suspension would change that and some settings would change it, but as you know, I don't use any suspension changes or settings or anything like that. It's simply just default, which I guess is ironic because you could say my settings are default, <laughs> I guess so. But anyway, going into Piratella for the uh, fourth time of asking here as we bring on the acceleration, as you feel rather confident in this particular section. I love, love entering into this corner. You can really chuck out the right boot, throw it into the right hand, and then once again, just slowly bring on the brakes and bring it into the right hander once more. But slowly bringing on the acceleration here, otherwise that happens. <laughs> oh, someone, someone got a little bit too involved with the racing at that point and just slowly went too hard on the acceleration. It does happen, ladies and gentlemen. I am human. I do make mistakes, and there is my mistake. Well, second mistake for this Grand Prix after ditching it early on into turn one. But uh, for now, still very promising so far. And of course, if you are enjoying the video and you didn't slip off into a corner like everyone else did, slip down to the comment section down below. Leave a comment about your favourite part of the Grand Prix. Hit the like button, and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see more Dot Race content. Do have a lot more MotoGP 21 videos coming this week. Of course, we've got the uh, fantastic career mode on board the Yamaha, and I can tell you, you won't be disappointed with the content. So get yourself subscribed as we start the final lap, because this penultimate lap is ending, and it is down to this. Jade Wright, three and a half seconds behind us. I don't think Suzanne Gobert or Jade Wright are going to give us any trouble right now, as we are so far ahead, we could even stop and have a little few seconds to ourselves. In fact, maybe not. 3.2, maybe the, oh wow, oh wow, look at the lap, look at the, look at the gap, six seconds, Jade Wright is at a catastrophe, Jade Wright has blew it, Sarah Morrow, I was just about to mention, in fact, where's Suzanne Gobert gone, I was just about to mention that we won't get an Italian here in this fantastic circuit of uh, Imola here in Italy, but we do, we will have an Italian here in Imola, and that is Sarah Morrow in second position, so good job to the lady behind us in the second place. But I will mention that I have really enjoyed this particular Grand Prix. This bike is fantastic. It feels really good. It has a heck of a lot of power, though. A heck of a lot of power. So I guess it is very easy to make a couple of mistakes, which I've done in this video. But I also like the fact that I've made a few mistakes because it just keeps things real instead of just me dominating over and over again. I think that's why I probably really enjoy playing the MotoGP 21 career mode because the AI really pushes you to your limits sometimes. Here in Ride 4, not so much, but I still absolutely adore this game and I hope you guys do as well because Ride 4 has been fantastic and this Grand Prix has also been just as fantastic. But now breaking into Rivarta for the very final time of asking and I tell you what, we really, really brought on the power on this final lap. We were uh, about a second going into the Aqua Minerale corner, whatever it's called, as we get a big chunky wheelie coming out of the corner, but we actually reduced that gap down to five tenths of a second just from the chicane alone. So we were pretty dominant here in Imola dare I say myself, but this is going to be it. Very Antibasa has been completed. The Imola Grand Prix has been completed. Unfortunately, I can't get the wheelie up, and I guess it's going to have to end it without a wheelie. But guys, it's been a pleasure to do this video for you. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comments section down below. Consider hitting the like button, and consider subscribing for a lot more 
dot race bike content. So upon that note, guys, thanks for watching. It's been a pleasure. I will see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.